Hey folks, my name is Dave. This here is Lefty. That over there is Honcho, our 1978 Jeep J10 Desert Race Truck. Welcome to NTD Racing. Today we're talking all about Lefty and how we're going to build some spindles. We're going to start with what I always call the extreme of the design. The, from the outside of the tires and work our way in towards the uh, center in this whole design of the suspension for the front end of Lefty. So what you can expect to get out of this if you're working on your own truck or something like that and wondering how we do suspension design, I'm gonna show you all those things as best I can. I'm gonna give you all of the resources. If you check the description of this video, you'll find links for either the videos I watch or the apps that I use. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I use those things to build the suspension for this truck. And there are so many people out there that are so much smarter than me on this. You might be watching this video thinking, man, he should be really using this and send me those things in the comments either that or through our, our webpage at ntdracing.com. And I will add those to the description. For the other people that watch this video, building their own suspension, it'll definitely help those folks out. And speaking of helping folks, uh, we just got done running the MIN 400. And at the MIN 400, if you've seen our other videos, you know we were part of the military challenge. We ended up raising $25,000 for our partners, the Folds of Honor. And one of the big helpers there was our other partners, Milestar. They sent two folks out, Chuck and Mason, some amazing folks. And you know, it just made me so happy to be part of the Milestar family, running their tires on our truck. I thought it was really cool. And I just wanted to say thank you to those guys for helping us at the Military Challenge at the MIN 400 and making that a total success. At the event, we raised more money $25,000 than has ever been raised by another team at the Military Challenge ever in the history of the MIN 400. And that is really cool. That equates to five scholarships going to some really deserving families. With that, let's go ahead and get on the computer. I'll show you all the resources I'm using. We'll use Fusion 360 to prepare the parts to cut on the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR. Let's get to it. Okay, if you've just started following along for this build, uh, I'm starting with the spindles. Why the spindles? It's because whenever I'm designing something, I think that you need to work from the extremes and work your way in. And I like to start from the front of the vehicle to the back of the vehicle and just let all the dimensions kind of work themselves out from there. So I'm starting with the outsides of the tire to the outside of the tire, which on the front of Lefty will be 91 inches. And that's the important dimension. And here's some of the parts we'll be using to make all that stuff. So we've got the uh, brake calipers, the brake discs, and also the uh, hub bearings from a 2010 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. We'll be using the steering box from a 2013, just because that's what I've got right now. And it should work out pretty good. But let's go ahead and really quickly talk about how I'm going to take dimensions off of all of these parts to start building and designing this caliper before I start cutting parts out on the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR. All right, so overall big picture here, what I plan on doing is I need to get some dimensions from this thing. And this is this thing's all seated the way it'll be bolted down once it is on the truck. Um, and what I need to know is, you know, not necessarily the backspacing of the wheel, because that is what it is, but really, is how close can I put the uniball to this hub right here? And so how I'm gonna build stuff off of this uh, hub bearing such that I get that uniball as close and as far into the wheel as I can, is what my plan is for lacking a better plan. And then from there, I'm going to space off probably about you know 16 inches uh, for the top of the spindle where the other uniball is gonna go. And you know, just after doing some research and watching the guys over at Shock Therapy, uh, and I'm gonna show you this app I have also for suspension design. What I wanna have happen is that if I drew a line from the uniball that's out here 16 inches vertically and drew a line from there straight through this uniball, I want it to intersect all the way down here at the center patch of the tire where it would intersect down there. So that's how we'll design this thing. Just using that, you know, I'm not, I'm no suspension pro here. I've been doing this my whole life, but I'm just you know kind of taking what the pros say to do. And so that's what we'll do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is you can see that the mounting holes for this uniball, I'm sorry, for the hub bearing are, are pretty far down here. So, and what I did in the past is I took the old spindle and I spent hours just cutting that thing down to a little bit of a nub so I could mount these things. But I'm gonna do this a little bit different this time is I'm gonna take advantage of the fact I have a plasma table and some quarter inch plate over there. And I think if I take this and 
if I make four quarter inch plates and stack those and weld those to the bottom of the, the spindle, then that will space this thing up far enough to where it'll clear the uh, non-rotating rotating part or the part that's actually connected to the wheel. Uh, it'll clear that and then also clear all these other parts. And then you can also see that it'll clear the uh, brake rotor by about a quarter of an inch, which to me seems like enough. And what I'm going to do now is hop on to Fusion 360, get some couple more dimensions, and then design how that spindle is going to come out 16 inches and how far it has to come up to clear the tire and also to make those lines work out. Okay, here's some of the dimensions that I'll be putting into the Fusion 360. First of all, we got the height of the top of this plate right here to the base of my table. So basically where the, the tire is sitting, about 11 and 1 16th of an inch. And then the total height of the, the tire overall sitting on the table is about 13 and 5 16 of an inch. And that's going to kind of give me some of the clearances there that I need to make sure that as the spindle comes up, it clears a tire. And then finally, the uniball, which is going to mount in there. And I'm using one of these uniballs. I get these from CarTech. Um, if you're wondering where we get all these things that we're building with, uh, a lot of them are from CarTech. If you want something, you can build a full trophy truck, walk in there and get all the stuff that you need. Talk to Tyler whenever you go there. We, that's the guy that we work with. He's amazing. And uh, let him know that NTD Racing uh, sent you. But anyway, obviously it's important, I think, to on the uniball is to get you know uh, how big this part is right here but realize is that the uniball is part of the a arm and not the spindle and so what you really have to do is measure the dimensions across it this way what is the widest it could possibly make itself and in this case it was about 3.02 inches is, is about as wide as i can make it and that's what i have to account for is that thing rotates left and right and up and down in relation to the spindle. So when I make my calculations, I'll be using, you know, about three and a quarter to give myself some slops as that thing moves in there. It's got room not to make contact with the rest of the spindle. Okay. So first off, I am a, I think a student of suspension geometry and I would say not the best student in the world, but I, I'm zeroing in what I would call some good resources. And I'm going to try and share all these with you. And if you look in my description below, here are at least some of the things you'll find and probably some more by the time I'm done with this video. But, um, my, one of my favorite places to go is shock therapy. These guys are super smart. And if you are looking for shocks, send these guys your business just because I mean, they do a great job of just teaching people how to do it. And I find this guy, he reminds me of professors I had in college, like the good ones, the ones that came in and didn't just tell you how smart they were, but just showed you how smart you were and just really made the information simple to understand easy. And I, I love watching their videos. So really good stuff. Well, and I'm not going to show you the whole videos, but that's this is where I get a lot of the concepts. It's just where I understand a lot of the concepts is what, how they describe it in their videos. Suspension, geometry, and design. We'll get into this. Race aspirations. There's a link in the description below. And also they give you a discount. I contacted them. And they said, hey, you know, that's cool. If you if they go to your link, they'll give you a discount. I literally get nothing from it, but I, I think that their link is really good. And I'll show you that here in a second. Also a triangle calculator in case you guys don't remember how to do all that Sokotoa stuff. I don't know. I don't remember how to do it. So I go to the calculator and then a wheel size calculator. So let's, what we need to do is we need to get some information from all the measurements that we took on the tires. And we need to figure out how does that information now go into Fusion 360 to design the parts that we're going to make. And like I said, shock therapy kind of gives you a lot of concepts and shows you how to build suspension or how suspensions are designed such that there's not bump steer and that Ackerman angles applied and all those things. Um, and then we kind of take that over. I think if you, if you were to start anywhere, I would watch their video probably about five times when I have linked here. That's how many times I watched it. I think just to kind of get the concepts deep in my brain. And then I go over to this racing aspirations, uh, suspension geometry calculator and this thing is really cool because i have made front suspensions before where i had to mock the whole thing up in cardboard and moving some pieces around and it was really time consuming and this actually allows you to uh, take all those dimensions and then play with them on their on the calculator here to see how your suspension will react in our previous suspension on honcho it was called a, I called it a parallel box. I just, everything was parallel all the time. 
in all the suspension arms, whether it was the tie rods or the upper or lower suspension arm, were exactly 24 inches long. And so that just, and that just by geometry eliminated any bump steer. Everything was always parallel with each other. And what I'm making on lefty uh, is what would I, I would call a short and long arm suspension, where the top arm is a shorter length than the bottom arm of the suspension. And you know, I'm tr again, this is me being a student, but the reasons that I'm thinking that I want to do that are a couple. And one is is the suspension goes through its travel. If you pay attention to the contact patch of where the tire is contacting the ground as it kind of goes up and down, that contact patch kind of stays in the same location as it goes through its suspension travel. There's one of the reasons that I want that. So and you can also come over here and grab one wheel and you can kind of see, you can almost track a line on the screen and see how your contact patch kind of stays in the same place so you're not getting a lot of tire scrub. There would be one reason why I would want to do that. Another reason is, you know, just the geometry of the hood and the geometry of the thing. I, this is, I know it's probably not why everyone else does it, but as you watch as the tire goes up, it kind of tucks itself at the top up there into the hood of the car a little bit. And that actually would have been a big deal on Honcho. There's just another reason, but not the only reason. Let's say another reason you're going around a turn and the car starts to lean, you know, whatever it leans, generally it also kind of compresses that outside suspension a little bit. And now you can see is that tire kind of normalizes itself and there, the contact patch on the ground is big and you have a lot of traction, I would think, with that tire. So there is another reason. It's just that the geometry of that short and long arm suspension allows it to do that. So that's another reason why I am going with this kind of suspension geometry. And we'll get more into using this as I go and design the suspension. But today what we're doing is really concentrating on making the spindle over here and getting the design of that just right. So in making the spindle, um, I had to put in a couple of values to make those. And you kind of, this is where I, again, went back to my tire and took all the measurements. And I got to use the tire measurement calculator and I measured out that the tire size, you had to you gotta modify it there, is, is this is 343, 85, 17 is, and then you kind of move the tire around until you get that size. And then I moved it in and out until I got my track width, which is basically the center of the tire to the center of the tire. So if you added another 13.5 on there, you get our, you know, 91 or 13 in almost a quarter, you get our 91 uh, and a half inches wide from outside of the tire to outside the tire for what we will be using. That, that all will go into the, suspension arm geometry later on. But what I am more uh, concerned with is the geometry right now of, of this uh, spindle. And so in reality, our wheel is centered. It is a nine inch wheel and it's got four and a half inch back spacing. But as it sits in, as when I measured it from the side of the wheel to where the spindle is actually gonna mate to the you know the to the wheel I guess you know there's a, there's the bearing in there there's the brake in there then that kind of offsets itself over there and again you have to do a little bit of math here this isn't totally intuitive I find it a lot easier than making cardboard models uh, 113 uh, millimeters is what I got from the center of my wheel to where the my spindle is actually going to mount the way that we're going to build the spindle and then from there two and a half inches out is where my uniball is going to mount and then from there i needed to kind of calculate i need to figure out like well how big is this arm going to be i it's arbitrarily and i'm sure i'll go back to this and wish i had maybe changed it but i figured about 17 inches and that is about how long the trailing or my spindle was on Honcho, so about 17 inches long, give or take. And so I was gonna make about the same. And then as I picked this, so the bottom uh, point right here is easy. So I wanna tuck it in as close as I can to the tire, centered on the hub and all that. So that was an easy location to find. It's this point right up here, which I had to kind of move back and forth to figure out exactly where I wanted. Again, 17 inches long, and that's gonna be the kingpin length. So it ends up being about 17 and 3.375 is a kingpin length. That's the distance from the one uniball center to the next uniball centered. And then as I move that uh, that point back and forth to make this scrub radius, and I'll kind of show you here, as I make this scrub radius change, 
where the scrub radius is if you take this line here from the kingpin angle all the way down, it needs to intersect at the center of the tire down here. And as I move this thing back and forth, you can see down here the scrub radius changes from negative to positive. And I just moved it until it went to zero. And that happened to be 17.35 inches at 19 degrees is what ended up giving me that exact uh, scrub radius. And, and as it turns out, uh, 19 degrees is the real kingpin inclination angle. And the length, I guess, could be anything because no matter where you are on that 19 degrees, that line is going to go ahead and go to the center. So now let's take that number and we'll go over to our triangle calculator. I'm going to say 19 degrees and 17.375 inches. And then remember, it's a 90 degree triangle. So you need, to, you need two angles and a side or any two sides and an angle. So we know it's 19 degrees here. The other angle has got to be 90 degrees because it's a 90 degree angle triangle. And then the hypotenuse, that long side of the triangle, 17.375. So I'm going to hit calculate on that. And it gives us these dimensions right here. Uh, so 17.35 on the hypotenuse. And then you've got, I guess what this would be called, the adjacent, which would be 16.42. And then the opposite, which would be 5.6. Five, and there's your numbers. And those are things that now we can go to our Fusion 360 and use. Those are numbers we can use. That's our X and our Y axis. Now, how am I going to make this on Fusion 360? Is I'm actually taking an existing spindle that I had. This is the spindle from Honcho, and this is what we made. And there are some parts I like. I really like the plate back here, which engages, it bolts onto the hub bearing. The brake bracket worked really well. And you can kind of see, as you look on the front, you can see where that hub bearing mounts right there. And there are through areas there where you can get a wrench in there to tighten those things down and all those things. It really worked well. The thing I need to change is this upright here is we're going to modify that piece. And so, uh, again, this is one of my you know early CAD drawings. And I've learned a lot since. I think I would do it differently, but I'm going to go in here and see if I can edit it. So before I do that, I don't want to lose that file. I'm going to go and save it as and we're going to call it lefties, lefties spindle. All right, so now we are modifying lefty spindle. And things you gotta remember is any kind of design uh, that becomes a, a structure or something like that has sketches and bodies. Um, and so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna move the bodies out of the way so I can get to the, uh, the sketch. And as you can kind of see right here, uh, I'm going to hit hotkey M and I want to keep this part. So I'm going to kind of get it out of the way. So I'm not modifying that. And I'm also going to move this back plate again. So hotkey M is telling me I'm moving a body. I'm going to select this body. I'm going to move this one out of the way also, because I don't want to mess with, with those things. I still have the drawing back there. The sketches are still there, but the bodies are over here. And actually if I modify any one of these sketches, these bodies will change also, even though they're kind of out of the way. But uh, there you go. So you're, you modify sketches and it translates those modifications onto the bodies. Now we're going to go ahead and modify this sketch, which there is a body there associated with it. Let's go ahead and do that. I've moved those parts. Now I know what I want to do is I want to sketch on this one. So I kind of need to figure out which sketch it is. I can click on it and there you go. You see it highlights that sketch. I can turn that sketch back on so that I can see it. And I can turn the other sketches on or off or whatever I want to do to see the sketches. I only really want to see the one because I'm working with it. And you can see early on, I don't know why I made that box around there. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me now why I would have done that. But there you go. That's I had that on there early on. We'll work around that. I'm going to right click on that and it's going to give me the option to edit the sketch. And now I'm back in here drawing onto that sketch. And all those lines are just like normal sketchable uh, lines. I'm going to turn that. All right. So there we go. So this one right here, I'm going to leave that there. I, I Two and a half inches away from the plate ended up working fine. I think I put it two and a half inches away because I also had that brake caliper welded in there and I needed a little bit of space for that. So I think that was the driver behind that. What I really need to do is I need to move this point over. I messed around with my numbers a little bit. Um, I know I said that I was going to use, uh, I think it was like 17 inches, for, but I, I on the hypotenuse, I'm just going to use a nice, I like round numbers. I'm going to use a 17 or 16 inches. So I'm going to pick this, this box right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn on the um, construction lines. And remember, construction lines are things that the program will not generate a cut path on. So if you left it there for some reason, it's a dotted line, then 
then it won't generate a cut path. Any of these other lines, then the program's going to want to generate some kind of a cut path. So, um, so I want this thing to be from that point vertically or excuse me, horizontally. It's going to be five point five one inches. And then tab, and then 16 inches, my nice round number. Let me go back over to my calculator, make sure I got the right dimensions there. 5.51 and 16 inches, all that looks good. Cool. All right, there are, there are my dimensions. I'm going to hit enter. And then now that's the location I want to put. And you can see it's exactly the same height as my other spindle there. Um, that's exactly where I want that circle. So I'm going to hit hockey C. I'm going to pick, I'm going to turn off construction lines. It's going to snap to that point, and I'm going to say 0.77. I want that to be a three-quarter inch hole or 0.75. I usually go about two, 20 thousandths over for, the, for plasma cutting, and that seems to be working pretty good for getting just the right size hole that I want. I still might have to get in there with a die grinder and make it just right, but that's pretty darn close. So there is where the new hole is going to go, or the, the top uniball, so this will be the bottom uniball, the top uniball of this spindle that I'm going to make. And then now i got to connect those two. So I want to uh, come down here, and this other plate, I kind of brought it off there. I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher because I want these, the plates, the backing plates I put on there, I want it to weld right to the top of this one. So I'm going to change that a little bit uh, as I, I go in there. So um, and let me see, what's the radius of this circle I put in here? I think I used, okay, 2.5 was the, the radius I used. So around this circle, I'm also gonna put a 2.5 inch circle. And that allows the uniball to rotate and not strike the metal. And that's about as big as I could get it. And, and that was pretty close. I maybe had to shave a little bit off later on, but it was pretty darn close. Now, since I'm moving this thing so much further out, um, then this one, this one is literally right up against the tire if you've ever seen our spindles uh, before. And this one's going further out. So I have a little bit more room to, to go back this way. And just, you know, as you kind of look at this thing and talk about the loads that are going to go on it, there's going to be large loads kind of pushing in and out as that tire tries to, you know, rock left or right. And then obviously big loads as you hit the brakes and those kinds of things put, you know, put sideways. And we'll, we'll account for all those by basically gusseting and then also kind of putting some plates on the front and the back. And it's going to be easier with this one because we're not going around the tire with uh, this design. That being said, um, what I want to do is I want to just do hotkey C and I just kind of, I'm just, I'm really picking kind of a, a random spot out here. I don't know, that's not what I want. That doesn't look exactly what I want to do. How about we go hotkey C again? I escaped out of that one. I'm just going to make a point right out here. I don't know. looks right to me. Let's put that point right there kind of random. I'm making this up as I go. Um, now what I want to do is I want to kind of connect connect some dots. So I'm going to go hotkey L, which is going to bring up my line. And I'm going to go right about off the top of this plate right here. And I'm going to go right to this point right here. Right here. I'm going to make it as tangential. So I'm going to move it around until it snaps. And you can kind of see that constraint in there has be given me the, the indication that that is tangential to that point. And you can kind of see now there's that little symbol right there. So that that is a constraint that won't move around uh, on us. Um, and then now what I want to do is I want to kind of connect the tops of these two circles. So I'm going to hit hotkey L again. And I'm just going to connect here to there. That one's going to be tangential. This one is not tangential unless I go here and say pick, pick that constraint, pick that line, and say, okay, make that tangential to that circle. All right, so now you kind of see what this design is going to look like a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and clean some of this up uh, now while we're here, just so it doesn't look such a mess, by just going in here and just erasing some of the lines that I no longer want in this design. There we go. All right, now I need to connect from here up to here. And my goal in this build, in this design, is to try to, as best I can, to maximize you know, the thickness between here and the front of this spindle. So I'm gonna kind of, I think I'm gonna start it from right about here on this line. Let's just pick a point right about in here. And, and then I'm gonna bring it over to say right about here. This looks about right. And then from there, I'll make it tangential to that part and then Again, go in here and cut up a little bit of the lines, get rid of those, get rid of that line, that line. All of those lines. 
this one does not appear to be tangential. So I will go in here and say this line should be tangential to that one. You're not doing it. That line. There we go. There, now I can go and cut this one. Oh, let's say it's all cut. All right, cool. Um, now, anytime you have a hard angle, you have a stress concentration. So I'm going to go and make this thing a fillet. There we go. And then I'm going to cut this line right here. And I'm going to also fill it between that one and that one. There. So it is going to be easy to gusset this thing with a flat plate here on the front and a flat plate here on the back. And then also I'll probably do something like a plate to here and a plate back to here to resist any kind of like buckling over, almost like a domino effect inside there. So that's, that is how that is going to look. Besides that, I just need to make sure that I've completed the drawing. So I might just go in here and just create some lines because it looks like there's a construction line there. And then from here, I want to com complete the line all the way to, to this point there. Oh, I don't think I grabbed that down there. So. All right, all the way down to here. There, now I think I've completed that drawing. So now what I can do is hotkey E. I can say, all right, I want to, now it looks for some reason again, something I did here a, over a year ago when I made this thing is, uh, I, it's this little box is here. I don't know why it's there, but if I grab that, I should be able to now extrude this thing. I'm cutting it into quarter inch plate. And you look over here, this is again, one of those gotchas when you're extruding something is what is it doing? And it's telling me that it's joining. I don't want it to join. I want it to create a new body. Um, all right. So uh, now what I want to do is extrude this thing. And I'll be totally up front. I just tried to extrude it and I had to figure out what was going on. And just the weirdness sometimes with Fusion 360. And like again, as I got better, I figured out how to deal with bodies and, and those kinds of things. So I'm going to hit hotkey E and go to extrude this thing. And because I put this weird plate in here for whatever reason, um, it's got this line here, but that's not that big of a deal. It told me right now it is selected two profiles, which is fine. That's exactly what I wanted to do. And I, if you look down over here, it says, okay, I'm making a new body. But as soon as I put a thickness in it, say 0.25, it says, now you want to join. Ah, well, that's not what I want to do. I actually want to go and create a new body. Now, this is something that normally doesn't happen with Fusion 360, but for, for whatever reason, because of the thing I messed up before, uh, it's there, but I turn on bodies and then now it's going to let me go ahead and create a new body. And it's got this plate in here. I don't know why, whatever. So anyway, um, now I, what I can do is I can, now that this is a new body inside this thing, you can see that's there. I can hotkey M select this thing and now I can move it and, and do all the stuff I need to do with that part, which is basically lay it down and cut it. And so that's what we're going to do um, on the uh, the next episode of this one. But uh, now you kind of see how I did that. I guess we can go ahead and get these things ready to, uh, to cut these things out. So basically what I need for each of the spindles is I need one of these plates. I need one of these and I need two of these. So uh, first off, you know, it's like as you as you go to, to cut these things is you need to put them all on the X and the Y axis. So how do you do that? And this is something I figured out is that first I want to say, okay, I'm done moving it, um, is I want to put them all on the same plane. So I'm going to hit modify and right down here, there's an option called align. So you hit align. And what I want to do is I basically want to put this, make it, make it bodies, is I want to put this face right here on the same plane I'm going to hit select over here, the same plane as this face. And now it's moved it down there. And now all three of these are on the same plane, which is basically what you need to do when you, when you cut something or you do some plasma cutting. Let me hit hotkey M now, and I'm just going to pick this thing. I'm going to kind of, oh, I have faces selected, so I actually want bodies. So I'm going to select it now and I'm going to move it over here to this point. And now it's easy. Setting this thing up to do the cutting on the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR is going to be easy. And I'll show you how I do all that and set it all up. 
and how I do some test cuts on some of the parts that are non-consequential to kind of get it dialed in for my quarter inch plate. And then we'll go ahead and cut these things out completely. And then I'll show you all the things I do to get these things ready to TIG weld. Well, what you can expect from the next video is we'll be using the Crossfire XR now to cut out all those parts. I'm gonna show you how I basically dial the machine in to cut quarter inch plate. And then what I do with the metal after I'm done cutting to get it ready to weld and put those spindles together. You won't wanna miss it. There's a lot of other content on this channel where I built spindles before for Honcho. You can go back and check that stuff out. And I'll be trying to provide a lot more of that. If you wanna see something in particular, please ask me in the comments and I will add that to whichever video I can in the future. With that, I hope that you'll consider hitting the like and subscribe, ringing the bell for notification for future episodes, and I will see you next week. Take care of yourself.